Hello there, everybody. This is Mike here, Game from Scratch, and today we're going to take another uh, quick and dirty look at another quick and dirty game development tool. This one is called Spriteify. It was just posted up on the uh, Art Game Dev forums over on Reddit. A very straightforward tool. It is a procedural 2D sprite generator. Um, I'll show you exactly what that means in action, but basically it is for creating um, procedural sprite sheets. Uh, so let's just jump in and take a look at it. Uh, first off, this is a web-based tool, very straightforward, very simple. Hopefully this will be a short video as a result. Um, and basically just head on over to spriteify.com. I will link that URL down below. This is completely free, uh, fully browser-based. I'm running it in Microsoft Edge, so that leads me to believe that all desktop browsers work. My understanding is this does struggle a bit in mobile, which is a bit unfortunate. But you can see over here, uh, this is basically where you paint your sprite. Uh, you got a number of options going on on the left hand side here. You can pick your basically painting mode. Uh, you're painting either the body or the border of the sprite. Or you can get into some of these guys over here, which um, I haven't fully figured out if I'm honest, but uh, we'll play with it in a little bit. Uh, your drawing surface is over here. You control your drawing surface right here. You can pan it around, etc. But probably what you're going to want to do is zoom in or out, which you can do here. So we're going to zoom out a bit, and you can add cells to your uh, sprite sheet. So let's make this, say, 15 by 15. Um, there's a couple other neat things you can do, one of which we're going to do this time, is we're going to set it to mirror left and right. So you see there, now our drawing surface is double-sized. Now let's say we were making a game like Pac-Man or Space Invaders or something to that effect, and let's just go ahead and start drawing one. So first thing I'm going to do is draw out my border. So this is the, uh, the pixels basically surrounding the shape of my sprite image. Yeah, we'll just make something that looks a bit like this. Oops. Uh, by the way, there is a control Z, uh, so you can undo. And just paint out your image like so. Twitchy again. Let's undo that, undo that, and down like so. And then next up, we've got, I'm going to do some inner shape as well, like that. All right, so that is the outside border of our sprite. Now we're going to go ahead and fill in the body. This is the stuff that cannot be changed and will not be changed. Uh, in terms of feature requests, the down here says report a bug in a feature. Uh, a flood fill tool is definitely high on my list of features to request. Uh, so we're just going to fill the interior of our said sprite like so. And once again, you'll notice that on the mirror side, it is filling in as well as we go. Would also be nice to be able to set a slightly bigger brush pixel size, but oops, one too far. The workflow isn't bad. All right, so there we go. We've just generated, uh, I don't know, somewhere between a Space Invaders ship and a Pac Man ghost. Um, so you've got these other options here. Again, I don't fully understand what a lot of them are for. Um, you can come on down here. We can say how many sprites to generate. Uh, we have it auto generate. We'll get back to that in a second. Um, and we've got some settings over basically how it's going to go about actually creating the sprites for us. But once we're done here, we can just go ahead and click generate. And you'll see it's generated a series of procedural generated sprites based off of the graphics we've done. Now, uh, in this case, we've just done body and border. So it's only got that to work with. Now we can set it to tell us the number that actually go ahead and generate. So let's do eight by four instead. And we'll turn auto generate on. So now whenever we make a change, it will immediately update down here. Now we've got a lot of control over how the shading is done. Uh, so we could do the um, directional shading. So here it's going up. So you notice it's getting darker towards the top. Uh, we could switch that of course to down, etc. cetera. Uh, we can change the shading strength. And as you change it, you immediately see the results over here. So I'm gonna make that back to, I like the brightness better. So let's put that back to 0.9. We can also change the amount of noise in the shading result. And basically that's your, it's causing the pixelation in the end result. So you see here, we're basically creating a whole lot of iterations of a sprite procedurally using um, the input that we give. Now, another one that really makes a profound change is the scaling factor. So if you're more of a clean look, you go scaling factor of four, Two is somewhere in between. We'll stick with two for now. So you see, basically each one of these is an image I can go ahead and download, um, and there is our end result. Another feature I'd like is the ability to actually save, so I could come back and um, have these settings up here saved, including my pixel grid over here. Uh, but it's a cool, easy to use, simple program. We can also change the, uh, the border color. So right now it's rendering in black. If we wanted that to be a different color, we could do that here. Same way we can change the background uh, color. Uh, so right now it's just white. So we can change the background that would be used here. We can also set a palette, a color palette, by importing it from an existing image. 
and if you just want slightly different results, you can just keep hitting the generate button and you're going to get slightly different results. Um, another thing we can do is come back up here and we can play around with a bit of these. Like, so uh, let's say border walker, and then we're just going to go around and just paint this edge right here. So you see there we've got this, this setting done. So now we go into the border and generate. And you're seeing each time it's actually going to generate a different sprite. So that is where those come into play. So it, basically the shape of the sprite or the, the filling of the sprite is going to be different every time based off of that setting. So if you wanted to really um, you use those particular values for making it, you know, changing the dimensions of the generated sprite. Again, another area where I would highly recommend is a bit of documentation over exactly how this chunk right here works, because I've really only figured it out from um, playing trial and error. Uh, again, this is going to be a really uh, niche tool. It's only going to be of use to, you know, a very certain game style. But if you are looking for uh, very variatic enemy looks, but you've got the basic template to work from, this could be a great tool for just spitting out those sprites really rapidly. Again, it would be nice if you could actually save your work so you could come back and work on it later. Um, but it does what it does. It does it well. It, it generates some pretty cool results pretty fast. Um, again, we can uh, change things up quite a bit and get some very different results very quickly. And that's about it. A uh, very straightforward tool. That is Spriteify.com. Again, that is linked down below. I hope some of you guys found it interesting. I love these little quickie browser tools. You know, they're going to not be appealing to like probably 98% of people out there. But for the 2%, it's just such a quick and dirty, fast thing for you to use, especially if you're like uh, game jamming or whatever, where you're under a tight deadline, but you need to create a bunch of different sprites. This could be the tool for you. Anyways, hope you found that useful. Uh, congratulations to Martin Buck for creating this tool. Um, there is, again, currently a discussion on Reddit about it where he's soliciting feedback, and you can submit feedback this way. So if this is something cool but you want to have some suggestions or changes, uh, do be sure to hit him up that way. Hope you like this. I will see you all later. Goodbye.